Hey guys, Wes Brown here, resident bow technician and field producer for Redline Bow Hunting, and welcome back to the shop. Obviously, you can tell I got a little bit more set up this time. I'm able to work on my bows. It's feeling a little bit more like the shop. But anyway, today we're gonna be talking about how to set up a multiple pin movable sight. And uh, we got a little bit of housekeeping to go over before we get into the nitty gritty of that. Um, so uh, this is gonna be a long video, so buckle in and uh, we're just gonna get started. So today I'm gonna be using the RL2 and this is the three pin. Now again, we're gonna talk about the three pin and the five pin, but mainly the three pin because if you can set up a three pin, you can set up a five pin, it's no problem. Now, when we set up this sight on our bow, you can go back and watch one of my videos where we talk about how to level this sight to your bow properly or use your local pro shop. They definitely know how to do that when it comes to your first, second, and third axis points and getting it lined up properly with your bow. So once you have that all done, then we can get started into uh, some of the things we're gonna talk about with this site and how to set up a multiple pin uh, movable site. So what you see here is pretty much what the site is out of the box. Now, my yardage wheel and um, my yardage uh, dovetail here, it's gonna move up and down. It may be variable, it might be down here, things like that. Um, but uh, we're gonna go over a few key points of this site and then I'm gonna tell you where I want you to put the site as far as uh, adjustments before we start shooting uh, so that we can make sure that we're working kind of from that ground up to give us a good base as we move up into finding our yardages. So the first thing is, is obviously we have our bracket right here. So with our bracket, this is our bracket mounted sight. We have our second axis point, our locking mechanism here. We have our yardage panel. We have our yardage wheel. And then we have our elevation gang adjustments right here. Okay, so that's, a, that's something I really want you to pay attention to, this gang adjustment, which is for our elevation up and down, our manual adjustments, not with the wheel. And then the next thing I want you to understand is the individual pins and their uh, key, key screws right here, or our Allen key screws right here. This is how you adjust these pins individually. And then obviously we have our sight housing, which we will call our gang, or you know, like all of our pins are in that sight housing. So that's part of that gang adjustment that I like to refer to. Now that we kind of have an idea of some terminology that I'm talking about with this sight, uh, let's make a couple adjustments before we get out on the range. And what I like to do is I take the yardage wheel and I run that yardage wheel all the way up like this until it stops. Now, now that I've done that, what I'm creating is I'm creating room for me to be able to take that yardage wheel and go down and find longer yardages as we progress through this process of setting up the three pin movable site. So I want that yardage wheel all the way up. So you're gonna turn it counterclockwise on the RL2, it's counterclockwise until the yardage goes all the way up. And then next, we're gonna look at our gang adjustment, which is right here on the right side of a right-handed sight. And you'll see the Allen key spot right there that you can loosen, and you'll be able to run this whole entire sight housing or our, our whole gang up and down. And you'll notice that there are a couple screws, uh, one at the bottom and one at the top. And these are safety mechanisms so that your sight housing doesn't fall off. Um, a lot of people have kind of wanted to get that more room, but if you set this up properly and you have a bow that is shooting, you know, 250 to 260 feet per second or faster, you're not going to have any problems and you're not going to have to move or adjust those safety features on this site. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your Allen set that was provided to you in the package and I want you to loosen this screw right here and I want you to move it all the way down that little panel here. Um, of the elevation um, bracket. Now, once you've done that, I want you to take your other Allen keys and I want you to go to the individual pins to adjust them. And what I'm gonna do here is I wanna make this as simple as possible and I want to take any variables out of this equation as possible so that we can focus on one thing at a time. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to loosen the bottom two uh, pins here we're gonna loosen these and we're gonna run them all the way down to the bottom and just slightly tighten them back up. So now we are only working with one pin. And again, I just wanna take out all other variables and I just wanna work on that top pin. Uh, we're gonna, next we're gonna loosen that top pin and we're gonna bring it up maybe an eighth of an inch because I want that 20 yard pin, our top pin, I want that to be at the, right around the bottom to middle part of the top third of the site. So if I took this site and I put two lines in it here and here, I'm, I create equal thirds within the site housing. And I want that 20 yard mark, our top pin, to be in that 
uh, top third of the site housing. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's creating this, uh, this setup for all three of your pins to be semi-middle um, or to be somewhat in the middle of your site housing uh, when we finish this whole process so that we don't have pins all the way at the bottom and we don't have pins all the way up at the top. They are evenly spaced throughout the site housing themselves. So now that we've done that, now let's go to 10 yards. Now we can be anywhere between seven to 10 yards from the target we're trying to shoot at, okay? Now, why we're doing this is to make sure that when we're trying to find our 20 yard mark, we're not gonna lose an arrow, we're not gonna shoot over the target, under the target. Uh, if we're 10 to se seven to 10 yards from that target, there's a small chance of us missing that target totally. And our goal is to make sure that our arrow is anywhere between three, is anywhere between one to three inches below the spot you're trying to shoot. Uh, because the way trajectory is out of a bow at seven to 10 yards, depending on your speed, uh, anywhere between one to three inches below the spot you're aiming at is going to get you pretty darn close out to 20 yards. Once you've done that, let's move back to 20 yards and let's shoot our first arrow. And now obviously when we're sighting in a bow, if our arrow is low, we're going to move our sight housing low. If it's left, we're gonna move it to the left. If it's right, we're gonna move it to the right. So wherever the arrow is going, we follow the arrow with the sight. Now, if you move back to 20 yards and your arrow is low, what we want to do, we're not going to move the pin itself. We already put the pin where we want it. We are not going to individually move that one pin. We are going to take the whole entire site housing and we're going to either move it down or up depending on where we're at uh, with our shot. So even at, uh, if we were at the 10 or 7 yards that we're shooting at and we're shooting way too low, then yes, we want to move the site housing low and we're going to use this screw right here, not the individual screws for the pins. We're going to use the whole gang adjustment screw and we're going to move it down or we're going to move it up. Now at 20 yards, if we're high, we want to move the site housing gang adjustment higher. If it's low, obviously lower. And then our left and right will be adjusted with the micro adjustment, the micro toolless adjustment here. We're just going to go left or right with that and uh, you'll be able to find your windage uh, that way. Now that we have our 20 yard pin set up, we're going to now work on our 30 yard pin. Now there's no science to this guys. There's no formula, uh, nothing of that. We're kind of setting this site up exactly the same way we're going to set up a fixed pin three pin. Okay. Uh, and the reason why we're doing that is because we're really only worried about our 20, 30, and 40. Now you can make that yardage anything you want. I'm just making it where it's my 20, 30, and 40. So now let's back up to 30 yards with a range finder uh, or however you calculate your yardage. And let's move that second pin, um, individual pin, we're gonna move that individually pin up towards the middle of the site housing. And our goal is to kind of be about an eighth to maybe a quarter inch below that 20 yard mark. Uh, for my setup, that's about how far it is, about an eighth of an inch. Uh, maybe a little bit less depending on the speed of bow I'm, I'm using, uh, but that's a really good, um, uh, kind of starting point for your 30 yard mark or 30 yard pin rather uh, and you know for safety reasons or just don't want to lose an arrow put an extra target under under whatever you're shooting or maybe below or above whatever it's just so you don't lose an arrow um, now you're going to shoot your bow and let's say you're you're high at 30 yards uh, because you maybe put your pin too high well now you take that individual pin and you move it down a little bit um, or I'm sorry you move it up because you're following the arrow uh, you move it up a little bit and you shoot again, now you're low. And you just have to sit there and fine-tune uh, fine adjust these, these individual pins. So you're working on that 30-yard mark and it's just going to take a little bit. It's a process, guys. If you love archery, then you love the process. And it's about getting reps in and, and working on our form, things of that nature. But we got to make sure we get this 30-yard pin uh, marked. Now, once we get that done, we tighten that 30-yard pin. Um, and then we move down to our 40-yard pin. And we're going to bring it up to about a quarter inch to maybe an eighth of an inch below uh, your middle pin. I think a quarter inch is too much, guys. But just try to stay right around the eighth of an inch. And now move back to 40 and see where it's at. And again, if it's low, follow that arrow with the pin individually. Individually. Okay, if it's high, follow that pin individually up. Um, and now that you have your 20, 30, and 40 set up, 
Um, now we're ready to start talking about applying a sight tape. Now, before we get into the sight tape, guys, I'm also getting questions of people saying that the further I move back, the further left or the further right my arrow is going. This is not a sight problem. Now, the way it could be a sight problem or the equipment problem is that the axis points were not set up properly. If my second axis point is off, which means that my sight is kiltered off to the left or the right, when I start lowering uh, or going further out in distance, my sight housing is actually on an angle, which means that my pins are on an angle. You might not see it, but if it's not set up properly, you're definitely going to tell out to distance, which means that if it's angled, it's going to, as you keep going further, your sight, um, your sight pins are kind of on an angle, which means that they are not in line uh, with your 20. So it could be altering your shot left or right, or your center shot is off or your bow is out of tune. There's so many different things or you're torquing the bow. There's so many different things um, that could be happening when you start moving backwards or further in distance and you start shooting further left or further right. I promise you it is nothing wrong with the sight itself. Uh, it's just maybe the set, the site was not set up properly or there's just something a little bit deeper wrong uh, with your total setup or how you're shooting. And as archers, we're always trying to get better. So we kind of take that with a grain of salt and we just try to get better. Go to a pro shop, look over your equipment again and start working on it that way. Now, now that we have our 20, 30, and 40 pins set, now this means that our site is ready to go, which means that if I go out hunting right now, my max yardage is 40 yards. I have 20, 30, and 40 yards, and I'm gonna use this site just as a regular fixed pin if I don't wanna go any further. So that's an advantage of having a multiple pin. You don't have to put sight tapes on them because guess what? You're set up for 20, 30, and 40. Um, but obviously we buy a multiple movable pin sight, a movable, a multiple pin movable site. Yeah, something like that. We buy those because we want to reach out and touch something a little bit further than the 40 yards. So now that we have not touched our yardage wheel whatsoever, we've only used our gang adjustments up and down. And that means that our wheel on our site is all the way up to the top. Now, if for some reason, guys, that you have a slower setup or you're just having trouble, you can use the yardage wheel to go down if you've maxed out your gang adjustment right here, okay? You guys can use the wheel, it's totally okay. But I suggest not to use that wheel any more than a half inch of movement. So when I turn this wheel and I go down, to right about there, that's about a half inch. I don't wanna use any more of that because if I use any more of that, I'm not gonna have enough space to go past, let's say, 60 yards. Now, for some people's setups, that's okay because you have a heavy arrow, maybe you're only shooting 250, 260 feet per second. It's okay, I promise, guys. Like, If you have a heavy setup and your, your arrow's going slow, you're not gonna go out to 100, 120 yards or 80 yards, depending on your draw length and, and, and pull weight and things like that. It's just not gonna happen. Um, if you do make it happen, shoot me in the comments. I would love to uh, kind of study that because it's just at the end of the day, like a slow setup is not going to reach out to 100 yards without this sight housing touching your arrow when you try to go down to 100 yards. Uh, but anyway, uh, so now we have, uh, supposedly, hopefully, we have a lot of adjustment room in our yardage wheel. Um, and what we're going to do is before we go past 40 yards and move this yardage wheel, um, after we set up our three pins, is I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to mark the top of this yardage panel where my, where my yardage indicator is. Now, if my yardage indicator is not here, I'm going to unscrew it from this and I'm gonna bring it all the way up to at least the top portion of the yardage panel. Once I do that, I'm gonna take a marker and I'm gonna mark it right there at that arrow spot. And what this is now is this is our home. This one spot on the yardage, on the yardage panel is our home. We, we know that if we take that yardage indicator arrow up to that spot that we just marked, we know for a fact that our 20, 30, and 40 are dead on. That's where our 20, 30, and 40 fixed pin aspect of this site, that's where we know that our 20, 30, and 40 are dead on. Now, if we wanna get out to 50 yards, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this yardage wheel, uh, we're gonna back up to 50 yards, obviously, and we're gonna take this yardage wheel and we're gonna move it down maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more, just depending. You, it's, again, it's a process, guys, and there's really no science to this. It's just, it's just putting reps in, all right? All you gotta do is put the reps in, put the time into your bow, and I promise this site's gonna serve you well. 
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your 50. Now, the, 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 another question that we're getting is, what pin do I use to, to go farther? And our, what I'm gonna call is our roamer or our floater, okay? You have a roamer or a floater, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna call it a roamer. And my roamer is the bottom pin on this site. Any multiple pin movable site, our roamer is the bottom pin. So when I take this yardage wheel and I go down to find my 50 yards, I have to use my bottom pin of this site, which used to be our 40, which is now trying to be our 50, we're gonna use our bottom pin as our roamer, okay? So you're gonna use the yardage wheel to find that 50 yard mark with your bottom pin. So you're gonna back up to 50, you're gonna draw your bow, you're gonna look through your peep sight and you're gonna use your bottom pin on that target and you're gonna release your arrow. If it's low, we're gonna take the yardage wheel and we're gonna go a little bit lower to follow that arrow. If it's high, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna use the yardage wheel to go a little higher. All right, so now we found our 50. That's exactly where our 50 is at. We're gonna make another mark right on our yardage panel right here, okay? We're gonna make another mark. That's our 50 yards. But that means that only means our bottom pin is a 50 yard pin at that mark, okay? We're gonna continue to do this 60, 70, and maybe 80. I want at least three yardages past 40 to be able to find our proper sight tape. So we have our top mark, which is our 40, which means that our top pin is 20, our middle pin's 30, and our bottom pin's 40. And then I drop down to 50 yards, right? We already made our 50 yard mark. Our top and middle pin are obsolete. We can't use them anymore because we don't know where they're shooting, all right? And there's really no point in figuring that out because I know the bottom pin is 50, at my 50 yard mark. That's all I'm worried about. And then I'm gonna go down to 60 and I know my bottom pin at that 60 yard mark on my yardage panel is a 60 yard pin, okay? And I'm gonna do that out to wherever I feel comfortable. For me, I'm gonna to try to get out to about 80, maybe 90. And if I do that, I'm gonna have a 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 yard marks on my yardage panel. And this is gonna give me the best opportunity to get the best sight tape possible for my sight. Now, we found all these yardages out to 80 yards, right? Let's say 80 or 90 yards, doesn't matter. Now we're gonna find a sight tape that's going to match those marks. So I'm going to go into the box that, I, that came with my sight and I'm gonna grab those yardages, or the yardage tapes, and I'm gonna find one that matches my 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 yard marks. Once I do that, I am not going to apply that tape with the 20 yard marks on there. Cause obviously you see that all of our yardage tapes go from like 20 to hundred yards, right? I'm going to cut that yardage tape off at 40 yards. And I'm gonna put that 40 yard mark of the yardage tape on my top mark in my yardage panel, okay? So my top mark is obviously 40 yards. And we know that my bottom pin is 40 yards at that top mark, our home spot. I'm going to take that tape that I cut off at 40, I'm gonna place it right directly on that 40 yard mark, making sure that the rest of the marks on that tape match up with the other yardages that I've found. So I wanna make sure it's gonna hit the 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. Now, the advantage of having that yardage tape on there properly is that once you have it on there, you're gonna be able to shoot individual yardages out past 40 yards. So you're gonna have your 40, and your bottom pin's gonna be 40 yards, and if you have a deer or a target at 47 yards, you'll dial that, you'll dial your yardage wheel down to 47 yards and your bottom pin is gonna be dead on at 47 yards if you chose the correct sight tape, okay? And really guys, that's it. Now there's a few things I wanna go over um, before I end this, 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 uh, this shop episode is, um, you know, there's a lot of variables um, besides just kind of bow setup uh, that can affect how a multiple pin or even just a movable site in general will be um, uh, set up for you. And uh, now if you are shooting and you've got this sighted in, and let's say you're using a wrist strap release, you're using a certain arrow and you have a certain poundage, certain draw length. Now I'm gonna tell you guys right now, if any of that changes, if you go to a thumb release or a different release, if you go to a different type of arrow or you, you um, bring your bow from 65 to 75 uh, pound draw. You have to redo all of this, guys. That's the, th the glory or 
you know, that's the best thing and the worst thing about movable sights is that it's so precise that if you change any of your equipment, you have to redo it over again, all right? So as archers, we love the process, right? I mean, it's, that's what archery is. I mean, it's not just like we don't just pick it up and go shoot it and all right, we're ready to hunt. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into this. And so if you change any of your equipment, I mean, literally from, uh, even if you change to where you anchor on your face, like let's say you talk to your buddy and your buddy says, no, you don't need to anchor there. You need to anchor here. And you're like, wow, that really feels good. That small little anchor adjustment might possibly make you have to readjust everything again. And that's not a bad thing. It just means that we are trying to better ourselves, which means that we need to make sure our equipment is keeping up with the things that we're doing, whether we're getting new arrows, we're switching to a thumb release, things of that. We want a lighter arrow, we want a heavy arrow. All of these things change things so drastically that we have to make sure that we're paying attention to all these things or our equipment's not gonna work for us. It doesn't matter what equipment you have out there, if you don't do these things or keep these things in mind, they're just not gonna work for you. So hopefully this helps you guys out. I really hope that I explain this as clear as possible and it hopefully it gets you guys out in the season. I know here in Michigan, uh, we're about to hit uh, October 1st, opening day of bow season. Um, I can't freaking wait. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be my first time. Like opening week, gonna be hunting Michigan. I'm like, it, it just gives me goosebumps, man, because I haven't done this in a really long time. Uh, so you know, I know this is late in the game, guys. So if you're getting a sight this time of year, uh, it's probably because you really needed it, or you're just like, man, I just, I have to get one of these sights. I hope this video helps you guys and it gets you hunting in the field quicker. Um, and I didn't confuse you too much. But again, guys, make sure you utilize your local pro shop because again, they have the tools necessary to make sure that you get the most out of all of your Redline bow hunting gear. And if you need to find a dealer, you can go to our website at redlinebowhunting.com and find a dealer near you. Because I promise, guys, it's their reputation on the line to make sure that you are successful in the field because if uh, you go off and they jack something up, they're obviously not gonna have a good reputation. And I promise, a bow shop's reputation is everything to them, so they want you successful in the field. Go to a pro shop, make sure they get you set up properly. But again, that's what I'm here for, guys, making sure that you guys get the most out of your Redline bow hunting gear at home if you can't get to a pro shop. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll talk to you later.